Paul's first epistle to the Thessalonians. Introduction While in the city of Troas, the Apostle Paul received the call in a vision which said, Acts 16 verse 9, Come over into Macedonia and help us. Macedon was a region that Philippi, Thessalonica, and Berea belonged to. Philip II ruled over Macedon, and it was so strategic that it enabled the son of Philip II named Alexander to go out from there and eventually rule over that whole part of the world. Paul and Silas first established a church at Philippi which was the chief city in that part of Macedonia, where they were shamefully entreated, before going on to Thessalonica which is along the southern coastline of what is modern-day Greece, between the cities of Philippi and Berea. Thessalonica was a very strategic place for the spread of the gospel of the grace of God, and chapter 17 of the book of Acts records for us the circumstances of Paul's visit there. Take a few moments and read Acts chapter 17 before reading 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 1 The Wrath to Come 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 1 Paul, and Silvanus, and Timotheus, unto the church of the Thessalonians which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be unto you, and peace, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul Paul's name always appears as the first word in each of his 13 epistles, Romans through Philemon. These are known as the Pauline epistles. Paul did not write Hebrews. Hebrews 2 verse 3 How shall we escape, if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? Notably missing here, and in 2 Thessalonians is Paul's usual reference to himself as being an apostle in his opening remarks. He does mention it later in chapter 216. There was no need for Paul to throw his apostolic authority and title around with the Thessalonians because there was no question with them of Paul's apostleship like with some of the other churches. The church of the Thessalonians which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no safer place to be than in Christ, which happens the moment a person trusts the gospel for their salvation. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4 Obviously, if the individuals in this local assembly are in Christ, then the church itself is in God the Father, and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you, and peace, the usual mention of grace and peace are mentioned as being from God the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, they do not come from Paul. Both the Father and the Son were rejected by Israel in the past, and because of Israel's rejection of the Son, the Father was ready to pour out His wrath on Israel and the world at that time. Psalm 2 verse 12 Kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Psalms 110 verses 1 to 6 The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion, rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord hath sworn, and will not repent, thou art a priest for ever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen, he shall fill the places with the dead bodies, he shall wound the heads over many countries. God instead interrupted Israel's prophecy program, and he instituted an unprophesied dispensation of grace. Ephesians 3 verses 1 to 9 For this cause I Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you. Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, and of the same body, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister, according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. 
Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hidden God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Grace is the dispensation that we live in today, which is sparing us for the time being from the wrath of God which he promised to pour out to avenge the rejection of his Son. God has interrupted the prophecy program and ushered in the mystery program of grace and peace, where he is not imputing our sins unto us today as he was under the law. That was welcome news for those expecting Christ to return to make his enemies, unbelieving Israel, and the lost world, his footstool, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 19 to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. And Psalms 110 verse 1 a Psalm of David. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. We are at peace today with God because he has decided to dispense to us grace. The time is coming when God's mystery program will be over, and the prophetic program for Israel will kick back in. Then God's wrath will be poured out at that time, not grace and peace, when the time of Jacob's trouble comes upon them. Jeremiah 30 verse 7 Alas! For that day is great, so that none is like it, it is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. 1 Thessalonians 1 verses 2 to 3 We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, and labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. We give thanks to God always for you all. They thanked God every time they prayed for having known them and the faithfulness in their mutual suffering that they endured. Work of faith, and labor of love, and patience of hope, Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, mentioned the same three gifts that the believers in Thessalonica exhibited towards them and those they ministered to. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 13 And now Abedeth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 4 Knowing, brethren beloved, your election of God. Your election of God, the Thessalonians were elect, as are all believers in this age, to have a work of faith, a labor of love along with a patience of hope in Christ Jesus. Since Christ is the elect of God, and we are in Christ, we become elect in Him. Isaiah 42 verse 1 Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth, I have put my spirit upon him, he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Romans 8 verse 1 There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 5 For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. Our gospel, Paul first mentions our gospel instead of the gospel, or my gospel, as he so often does because he is clarifying which gospel he is talking about. He is talking about the gospel that he preached and the same one the Thessalonians believed and were saved by. The gospel of the grace of God, as opposed to the gospel of the kingdom that had been preached during Christ's earthly ministry. Acts 20 verse 24 But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry, which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Matthew 10 verse 17 But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. The gospel that Paul preached to them was not just good words, news, only, they were words that had the power to save people through the regenerating work of the Holy Spirit of God. They could all attest to the character of those that had accompanied the Apostle Paul as they preached to the people of Thessalonica as men without reproach. In power, and in the Holy Ghost, there were demonstrations of God's power in the performance of miracles in Thessalonica. There was a church was established in just a short amount of time there in Thessalonica and some of Paul's men would stay behind to help it be strengthened before returning to their team. 
1 Thessalonians 1 verses 6 to 7 And ye became followers of us, and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. Followers of us, we are to follow Paul as he followed Christ. We are also to follow others who are following the Christ according to the revelation of the mystery that Christ gave to us through the Apostle Paul. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 1 Let a man so account of us, as of the ministers of Christ, and stewards of the mysteries of God. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1 Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 6 And ye became followers of us, and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, with joy of the Holy Ghost. 2 Thessalonians 3 verses 7 to 9 For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you, neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an ensample unto you to follow us. The Thessalonians suffered for their newfound faith, and it endeared them to the Apostle Paul who suffered along with them. This explains why he did not have to explain his apostolic authority in the opening words of his two epistles to them as he does in all of his other epistles. It is easy to follow someone who has suffered for the faith he is preaching. It was also easier for those around Thessalonica to serve Christ because of the example of how the Thessalonians continued to serve through all their sufferings. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 8 For from you sounded out the word of the Lord not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. Paul's job of spreading the word in that region was easier because of their testimony of suffering and service there in Thessalonica. Macedonia and Achaia, the regions in Greece where Paul was working at on this part of his missionary journey. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 9 For they themselves shew of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. What manner of entering in we had unto you, how their work affected those in the area. Ye turned to God from idols, this is faith in action. They were turning to God from idols. To serve the living and true God, this chapter is about the believer, you, and their, your, faithfulness to give the truth to a lost world. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 10 And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. To wait for his Son from heaven, these believers were instructed by Paul to wait for the Lord's return. Paul elaborates more clearly on that teaching in the following chapters where he describes it as a secret return in the clouds. This is called the blessed hope by Titus. Titus 2 verse 13 looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. The kingdom saints were told by Jesus that he would return in the same manner in which he went, physically and visibly. That will also happen at the end of the tribulation period. The rapture was first revealed to us by Paul in the first epistle to the Thessalonians, and that was many years after what Jesus said at his ascension to Israel. The rapture was still a mystery in Acts 1. The rapture could not be called a mystery to the Corinthians if Christ had already taught it to his disciples in the book of Acts before his ascension. Jesus was speaking of his coming back to set up his kingdom in Acts 1, not the rapture. Christ's revealing is, and was, no secret to the Jews, but the rapture was a mystery before Paul told the body of Christ about it. If it were not a mystery Paul would have never said, Behold I show you a mystery. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 51 Behold, I show you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. When the angels mention Christ's return in Acts 1, there was no mention of a secret catching away of saints, only the visible return of Christ from heaven, because that is concerning Christ's prophesied return to Israel. Today, as believers in the body of Christ, we are to wait for God's Son to return from heaven to meet us in the air, to be delivered from the wrath to come. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 to 53 Behold, I shew you a mystery, We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, 
For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. This return seven years prior to his setting up of his kingdom concerns Christ's return for the body of Christ. This is part of our mystery program that was kept secret from before the foundation of the world Romans 16 verse 25, but now is made manifest. The wrath to come, this is not hell, for billions are there now. We are delivered from that time of great wrath that shall come upon this earth. Zephaniah 1 verses 14 to 15 The great day of the Lord is near, it is near, and hasteth greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. This will occur during the 70th week of Daniel, known also as the time of Jacob's trouble and as the tribulation period. Daniel 9 verses 24 to 27 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks, the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Jeremiah 30 verse 7 Alas! For that day is great, so that none is like it, it is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Revelation 1 verse 9 1 John, who also am your brother, and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God, and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation 2 verse 22 Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Chapter 2 The Gospel of God 1 Thessalonians 2 verses 1 to 2 For yourselves, brethren, know our entrance in unto you, that it was not in vain, but even after that we had suffered before, and were shamefully entreated, as ye know, at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. Shamefully entreated, Acts 16 verses 12 to 40. The church at Thessalonica was a model church that all churches should seek to follow as a pattern for service amidst the suffering of great persecution. Paul serves the body of Christ as our pattern for all of us who have believed on Christ after him. 1 Timothy 1 verses 15 to 16 This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all longsuffering, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. The Gospel of God, many times, Paul calls the Gospel of God my Gospel, which I received, because it was given directly to him from God. Romans 2 verse 16 In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my Gospel. Romans 16 verse 25 Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. It is called our gospel one chapter earlier instead of the gospel to show us that it is specific to one group, and different from what another group was receiving. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 5 For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake.
2 Thessalonians 2 verse 14 whereinto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 3 But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. He did not receive his gospel from the twelve apostles who were still offering the kingdom to the nation of Israel. Galatians 1 verses 11 to 12 But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Much contention, the much contention was from the Jews in Thessalonica. 1 Thessalonians 2 verses 8 to 9 So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you, not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because ye were dear unto us. For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for a laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you, we preached unto you the gospel of God. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 3 For our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor in guile. Our exhortation, their preaching was not deceitful to the Thessalonians concerning Jesus actually being the Son of God. Nor were their statements about what God was now doing through the Apostle Paul for the Gentiles. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 4 But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. To be put in trust with the gospel, God put in the Apostle Paul a great trust to carry the gospel of the grace of God to the world. This was not the gospel of the kingdom that the twelve preached, which was to the Jew only and it was followed by signs and wonders because the Jews require a sign. Acts 20 verse 24 But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry, which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. The kingdom of heaven will not be set up on earth if people repent today, but that was what was promised to Israel if they would repent as a nation. They did not repent, however, and God ushered in the dispensation of grace which was given to the Apostle Paul to give unto us. Ephesians 3 verses 1 to 6 For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, and of the same body, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. 1 Thessalonians 2 verses 5 to 6 For neither at any time used we flattering words, as ye know, nor a cloak of covetousness, God is witness, nor of men sought we glory, neither of you, nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. There were no speeches given to woo the masses, only the word of God delivered with sincerity, love, and with boldness when necessary. Sought we glory, Paul could have sought to be recognized by the people as the apostle of the Gentiles and to have set himself up as a dictator, but that was not Paul's desire, he wanted the praise of God, not of man. Burdensome, he could have demanded that they were to cover his expenses, but he did not so as not to hinder his message from some who would criticize him if he took even a shekel. 1 Thessalonians 2 verses 7 to 8 But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children, so being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you, not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because ye were dear unto us. The gospel of God, this is found in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4, not in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John's gospels. Paul, and those with him, loved the Thessalonians, and were willing to suffer for them so that they might receive the truth, just like a mother would do for her children. 1 Thessalonians 2 verses 9 to 10 For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you, we preached unto you the gospel of God. Ye are witnesses, and God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. Not be chargeable unto any of you, 
Paul puts the Thessalonians in remembrance of their sincerity to reach their city for God. They worked a secular job to provide for their physical needs so that the people would not be able to say they were just in it for the money. 1 Thessalonians 2 verses 11 to 12 As ye know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you, as a father doth his children, that ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. Walk worthy. Paul tells them that as he expected them to walk as a believer should walk, so God expects them to do the same. Called you unto his kingdom and glory. Paul never mentions the kingdom of heaven in all 14 of his references to the word kingdom, it is always the kingdom of God. It is a heavenly kingdom for the church, which is Christ's body. 2 Timothy 4 verse 18 And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. The kingdom of heaven comes down to earth in the millennium, and it is a part of Israel's prophesied kingdom, the kingdom of God. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13 For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because, when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. The word of God, the difference between the word of men and the word of God, is that the word of God does an effectual work in the believer's life that no human philosophical argument can ever hope to do because it is carnal, and it is after the course of this world. Ephesians 2 verse 2 Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. The word is often referred to as seed. When someone listens to the word, the seed finds fertile ground to produce fruit from. The word of God is spiritual, and it is from the creator of this world, and it alone has the power to do an effectual work in your life. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 14 For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God which in Judea are in Christ Jesus, for ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. They did not seek to be persecuted as the churches in Judea were, but they sought to do what God wanted them to do in reaching their community, and that always brings about persecution. The churches of God which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. The statement made by Paul that the Jewish kingdom churches were in Christ Jesus has been used by some to confuse. People, it shouldn't. Kingdom saints needed to abide in the vine, Christ, to remain in Christ. John 15 verses 4 to 7 Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches, he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. We today in the body of Christ are placed into Christ by the Holy Spirit the moment we believe the gospel. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13 For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4 Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Saints in both programs are in Christ, just not in the same way, nor do they have the same purpose. 1 Thessalonians 2 verses 15 to 16 Who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins alway, for the wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. Paul was reminding them that they were not alone in their suffering because Paul and his companions also suffered harshly at the hands of unbelievers. 
Israel was soon to be blinded in part as a nation, rejecting God as a whole, and they will not have another chance to believe nationally until the tribulation period reaches its end. Individually, yes. To fill up their sins always, it was sin to not believe themselves in Christ, and then to kill him, but it was an entirely different thing to deny others the chance to hear and believe. The wrath has come upon them to the uttermost, the wrath that is promised to Jacob's descendants is the wrath that is poured out in the tribulation period, the time of Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah 30 verse 7 Alas! For that day is great, so that none is like it, it is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. 1 Thessalonians 2 verses 17 to 18 But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Wherefore we would have come unto you, even I Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Satan hindered us, Paul and his companions were run out of Thessalonica, taken, by the same Jews he was trying to help, and they were hindered by Satan from returning. Paul was thankfully able to send Timotheus to see how they were doing in his absence. This was not because Satan was victorious in this situation over God's plan, but God wanted to strengthen this church to be able to stand on its own, so that Paul could move on and minister in other places. 1 Thessalonians 2 verses 19 to 20 For what is our hope, or joy, or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For ye are our glory and joy. Crown of rejoicing, this is a literal crown that is earned for leading souls to Christ, either directly or indirectly. We will be glorying in the souls we see in heaven that we have helped to bring to a saving knowledge of Christ. Paul calls the Philippians his joy and crown as well in Philippians 4 verse 1. Here Paul calls the Thessalonians his glory, and what he means by that is that they are the shining example of what a church should be. When Paul thinks of them, he glories in them. Christ is the literal glory of God that is mentioned in the familiar soul whining verse in Romans. Romans 3 verse 23 all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Jesus alone did not fall short because he is perfection personified. He is what we are all measured to, and we all have fallen short of his perfection because we were born in sin and because we chose to sin. He was born of a virgin which kept him from inheriting Adam's sin nature that we all have, and he never sinned. The scriptures say that we are drawn away of our own lust, and enticed, he had no lust. He is the glory of God. James 1 verse 14 But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Chapter 3 Appointed unto afflictions 1 Thessalonians 3 verses 1 to 2 Wherefore when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone, and sent Timotheus, our brother, and minister of God, and our fellow labor in the gospel of Christ, to establish you, and to comfort you concerning your faith. Forbear they couldn't wait any longer to establish you, to build them up in the faith. Because of the fact that Paul was run out of town, he felt as though he needed to return to finish what he had started, which he knew would be a great source of comfort to the believers in Thessalonica. That was not to be, so he sent his companion back to Thessalonica to help further establish them in the truth. 1 Thessalonians 3 verses 3 to 4 That no man should be moved by these afflictions, for yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass, and ye know, that no man should be moved, they are to stand fast and firm in their trials. See verse below. We are appointed thereunto, all who oppose darkness will be retaliated against by Satan and the world. 2 Timothy 3 verse 12 Ye, yeah, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. 1 Thessalonians 3 verse 5 For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you, and our labor be in vain. The tempter, this is speaking of Satan. Paul needed to know how his children were doing, and he wanted to give them more to help them as they continued on their journey serving God. 
1 Thessalonians 3 verses 6 to 8 But now when Timotheus came from you unto us, and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, and that ye have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us, as we also to see you, therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith, for now we live, if ye stand fast in the Lord. If ye stand fast in the Lord, when you are suffering it helps to know that others you have helped are making it through their struggles. Paul drew strength from the Thessalonians stand for the Lord. See verse 3 above about not being moved. This has nothing to do with losing one's salvation in the dispensation of grace, but it is about standing and defending what you believe. 1 Thessalonians 3 verses 9 to 10 For what thanks can we render to God again for you, for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God, night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face, and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Perfect that which is lacking in your faith. To perfect something means to complete something, to make it a finished product. What were the Thessalonians lacking in their faith? They obviously didn't understand everything about the rapture as Paul had to educate them further on it in the fifth chapter. 1 Thessalonians 3 verses 11 to 13 Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men even as we do toward you. To the end he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. To the end he may establish your hearts. To establish someone is to finish establishing them in the truth all believers need. Christianity today are not established in the mysteries revealed to Paul because there are too few people able to establish them in that truth. Unblameable in holiness before God, we are only unblameable today if we are in Christ, because He alone is holy and unblameable. Notice that we appear unblameable before God only after Jesus Christ comes for all His saints and He brings us with Him. At the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all His saints, how can the Lord Jesus Christ come with all His saints if they are not with Him? He cannot. He will come for his body and call us to meet him in the clouds one day soon, and we shall return with him to heavenly places and be presented by Christ before God the Father at his throne as holy and unblameable. Jesus will then return to the earth seven years later when every eye shall see him, and once he has made his enemies his footstool his kingdom shall begin. Those kingdom saints that were martyred during the time of Jacob's trouble will return with him along with all those held in the paradise of God. Revelation 2 verse 7 He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Chapter 4 Caught Up Together 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 1 to 2 Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. We beseech you, we beg you. What commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. God gave Paul commandments as to how we ought to walk and live as a believer to please God. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 3 to 5 For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. This is the will of God, even your sanctification, to be set apart fit for the Master's use. Abstain from fornication, sexual immorality outside of marriage. Know how to possess his vessel, our vessel is our body. We are to learn from God's words, commandments mentioned above, how to control the flesh and its desires. In sanctification and honor, set apart from the worldly lusts and honoring to God by not being a bad testimony to others by our actions. Not in the lust of concupiscence, our fleshly desires. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 6 to 8 That no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, 
who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. No man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, going beyond the boundaries of what is right. The Lord is the avenger of all such. He will recompense what was done by one believer to another believer at the judgment seat of Christ by the giving and taking away of rewards. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, Paul speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit testifies that when we are unclean and disobedient to God's word, we actually are despising him. Who hath given us his Holy Spirit, we should not look upon or do unclean things because he has given us believers his Holy Spirit. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 9 to 10 But as touching brotherly love ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed, ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia, but we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. Increase more and more, keep on doing what you're doing and do more as you mature as a believer. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 11 to 12 And that ye study to be quiet, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands, as we commanded you, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. Study to be quiet, the scriptures will teach you humility, and the honor of an honest day's work for an honest day's pay. Walk honestly towards them that are without, we are to be a witness with our lives and not just our mouths. Some people, however, are neither a witness with their life nor their mouth. That ye may have lack of nothing, this is speaking about spiritual things, not worldly possessions. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 13 But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, this phrase is used by God through Paul five other times. Romans 1 verse 13 Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was led hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. Romans 11 verse 25 For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 1 Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 1 Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 8 For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. Sadly, the body of Christ, for the most part, are still very ignorant of many of these truths. Them which are asleep, death is often spoken about in scripture as being asleep. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 6 and 18, 53 after that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. 2 Peter 3 verse 4 and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Those who have died in Christ are awaiting the union of their body, soul, and spirit in heaven when this corruptible will put on incorruption. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 51 Behold, I shew you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. All who are asleep in Jesus are immediately present with the Lord at the moment of their death, but they are not complete until that day when the Lord returns. 2 Corinthians 5 verses 6 to 8 Therefore we are always confident, knowing that, whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Very soon after the Thessalonians heard the gospel, they were taught about the rapture of the church. This is where Christ as its head would come back to get his body, the church just before the wrath of God would be poured out on the world. While this was welcome news to these believers, it would also produce some questions concerning the whereabouts of those who had passed on prior to the rapture. 
That was probably because Paul had not told them everything concerning the rapture when he first came because he spent only a few weeks with them. Remember this letter is being written very soon after Paul had left them on his second missionary journey, sometime after he had arrived in Corinth, most likely around six months after leaving them. It was Paul that first preached that to be absent from the body was to be present with the Lord, not the twelve apostles to the nation of Israel. 2 Corinthians 5 verses 6 to 8 They were talking about going to paradise when they died, and about one generation having to endure to the end of the 70th week of Daniel, the time of Jacob's trouble. Daniel 9 verses 24 to 27 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city, to finish the transgression, and to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand, that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks, and threescore and two weeks, the street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Jeremiah 30 verse 7 Alas! For that day is great, so that none is like it, it is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. And then of an earthly kingdom where all the Old Testament saints would be raised to rule and reign and with the Messiah. This passage of scripture has also been used by Satan to deceive many over the years by believing false teaching of the doctrine of soul sleep. The body sleeps, but the soul is what and who we are. It is in one of two places upon death, heaven or hell, paradise or punishment. There is no in-between place where the soul is napping. When the rich man breathed his last breath in this life, he lifted up his head being in the torment of hell. Luke 16 verses 20 to 25 And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass, that the beggar died, and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receives thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 14 For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, this is the gospel of the grace of God. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4 Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Acts 20 verse 24 But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry, which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Them also which sleep in Jesus, the requirement for those who have died, are asleep, to be caught up in the rapture was that they had to believe in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. They didn't have to endure unto the end of the church age to be raptured. Matthew 24 verse 13 But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. 
Christ had done everything for them that needed to be done, and by faith in his death and resurrection they received the gift of eternal life and were guaranteed a place in the rapture. In fact, they get a head start. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 15 For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. We which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, those believers that are living when Jesus returns in the clouds and the rapture occurs. Them which are asleep, Paul was told by the Lord himself that he would rapture the dead, them which are asleep, along with the living. The alive in the body of Christ at the time of the rapture will not prevent the dead, asleep, from participating the blessed hope. It could be that God told this to Paul in a later revelation, or that Paul just didn't emphasize the dead in Christ when he told them initially about the rapture. He may have only focused on what would happen to those who were alive when Christ would return. Death did not and could not separate them from the body of Christ. Romans 8 verses 38 to 39 For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This was a natural thing for them to ponder about, because when two people were married, they became one body, and at the death of one of them the other was free from the first to marry another. So, some may have assumed that since they were a part of Christ's body, that death may have separated them from that body, and when Christ came back, he would only be coming for those who were still alive in the body of Christ. All of the bodies of the saints that have gone on before us since the dispensation of grace began God will raise from the dead. Then immediately afterwards the believers that are alive during that last generation will be caught up together to be with the Lord in the clouds as well. God will not leave the body of even one believer behind. God will empty every grave wherever it may be and change those decayed pieces of flesh into glorious bodies. Every saint from every corner of the world will all be extracted from this world, leaving behind a godless world and a new dispensation where the kingdom will once again be at hand. Matthew 3 verse 2 and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. How is God able physically able to remove two in one house that are believers, and leave the one unbeliever behind, without making one mistake anywhere? Easy, God is simply receiving back and what came from him. His Holy Spirit is in each believer, and his Spirit will be returning with us in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. The Spirit will once again minister to believers during the tribulation period in a way that is identical to what it was with the little flock at Pentecost, because the focus will be back on Israel at that time, not the body of Christ. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 16 For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. What is it that will be shouted by the archangel? A great noise perhaps. In Joshua 6 verses 5 to 20 we have the children of Israel outside the walls of Jericho shouting at the sound of trumpets being blown by Israel's priests, but this does not concern Israel. The voice of the archangel, it is not the Lord that will shout, but the archangel, his identity is unclear. He will not be alone, by his side he will most likely have Gabriel blowing the trump of God. The trump of God, a trumpet used only for God. The dead in Christ shall rise first, these are those that are mentioned earlier as they who were asleep. Those who are raptured from this earth, the body of Christ, will escape the wrath that God is going to pour out on this world. The bodies of the dead will rise so they can be reunited with their spirits in the clouds, and these bodies will be changed as it says in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 to 58. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 17 Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so, shall we ever be with the Lord. We which are alive and remain, those who have believed in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus went up and a cloud received him the first time. He is coming back in a cloud for those who are in Christ at his return. So shall we ever be with the Lord, 
This scripture tells us we will spend eternity with the Lord, not in the air, but in heavenly places. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 8, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 18, wherefore comfort one another with these words. This should excite, comfort, and give hope for the future and motivate us to reach others so that they too can join us and all other believers in the rapture and miss the tribulation period. The saints in Thessalonica understood the teaching of the rapture, and Paul just elaborates more on the full extent of it by explaining that those who were waiting for it and died will not miss out on it because they died prior to it. Chapter 5 The Day of the Lord the first word of chapter 5 is the conjunction linking chapter 4 with chapter 5. Chapter 4 taught us something that had never before been revealed to man because it had been kept secret from before the foundation of the world. While chapter 5's opening verses simply reiterated words of the prophets that had been open knowledge for a very long time to any Jew that knew their scriptures, the close of the previous chapter concerned the mystery program for the body of Christ, while the beginning of this chapter deals with Israel's prophecy program which will run its course in the tribulation period. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 1 But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. The times and the seasons, the Thessalonians have no need for Paul to write unto them concerning times and seasons because of the mystery program and the prophecy program. Us in the mystery program have no signs to look for that need to occur before the Lord returns. He can return at any moment. Israel, however, seeks after a sign and they will have plenty of signs during the tribulation period, then they are to look up after all of those signs appear for their redemption draweth nigh. They are a part of the prophecy program. All of the prophecies that were not fulfilled at Christ's first coming will be fulfilled at his second. All of the things that he said would happen in Matthew 24 will take place after the rapture, during the tribulation period, not prior to then. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 2 For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. The day of the Lord, this is the return of Christ after the tribulation period to judge the world and set up his kingdom on earth. It is more often referred to as the Lord's day in scripture. Jews knew the prophecies of the Old Testament and didn't need Paul writing on those very familiar prophecies. What they did need, however, was any new information concerning the mystery program that was revealed to the world through the Apostle Paul. A thief in the night, Christ taught that the day of the Lord would come as a thief in the night to Israel, who has to go through the time of Jacob's trouble, Israel's, before entering into its kingdom. It is all a part of the prophecy program for the nation of Israel, but the church is a part of the mystery program of which Christ did not speak one word about. Paul revealed the dispensation of grace to us in his epistles. The twelve were still looking for Christ to set up his kingdom in early Acts. When Paul tells them that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night, he does not say in the twinkling of an eye because that statement deals with a time factor. The thief in the night illustrations speak about the unexpectancy of the ones being assaulted by a thief. They did not know what hour he was coming. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3 For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. They shall say peace and safety. Here we see the second group of people mentioned by Paul as they and them. These are those lost people who are alive at Christ's physical return, the day of the Lord, to set up his kingdom. Travail upon a woman with child, no woman has ever had a child in the twinkling of an eye. They carried their child for nine months, and then for many hours they suffered travail before delivering their child. There will be sudden destruction when the Antichrist breaks his covenant with Israel at the midpoint of the tribulation period and there will be great tribulation. Jeremiah 30 verses 4 to 9 And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus saith the Lord, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child? Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? 
Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it, it is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him, but they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 4 to 5 But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day, we are not of the night, nor of darkness. That day, the tribulation period. God uses darkness and night to represent non-believers as those that are clueless because of the darkness that they are in and the even darker time that is to come upon the earth following the rapture. The children of the light, God also uses light and the day to represent the saved in this age. Believers today are in the light during the dispensation of grace. Verse 4 is addressed to brethren, he is not talking about fellow Jews, and he not writing to his siblings living in Thessalonica, he is writing to the saints, believers, there. Those of us who are in Christ, the children of the light, will not be overtaken because we have already made our house safe. Our house is Christ, and we are safe in him. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 6 to 7 Therefore let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. The children of the light are not to be asleep spiritually speaking in this age of light. We are to be working to bring as many as possible out of the darkness and into the light. A drunk usually gets that way in the night. They are unable to think properly because their mind has been weakened by an outside source that they have willingly injected into their body. Those who walk in darkness today are spiritually drunk and are unable to think clearly because of the intoxication that they are under from the devil and from this world. 2 Corinthians 4 verses 3 to 4 But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 8 to 9 But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Us, who are of the day, the children of light, faith, love, and hope, we are to have faith in God that he will one day call his ambassadors home before he pours out his wrath and declares war on a world that has rejected his son. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, the wrath of the tribulation period, and the wrath of hell. We have that hope because we are the children of the light. God has not appointed the body of Christ to suffer the wrath of God. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 10 Who died for us, that, whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Whether we wake or sleep, we will be raptured whether we are awake, alive, or asleep, dead. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 15 to 17 we will live together with Christ in heaven, not on earth, if we believe today in the age of grace, but we are to let him live through us today in everything we say or do. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 11 Wherefore comfort yourselves together, and edify one another, even as also ye do. Anyone who believes they are going through the tribulation period cannot obey this scripture to comfort people by telling them they will have to endure the greatest tribulation the world has ever known. They may be a child of the light as far as salvation goes, but they are still walking around in darkness in this area. We can bring comfort one another who believe with the hope of the rapture of the body of Christ. If you believe you are going through the tribulation period, then you are identifying yourself with Israel under the law. You are not Israel under the law. Israel is not even under the law today. Today there is no difference between Jew or Gentile today, but one new man. Ephesians 2 verse 15 Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Colossians 3 verse 11 Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, 
but Christ is all and in all. Paul reminds us that we, both Jew and Gentile, are not under the law, but under grace. Gentiles were never under the law. Millions of Gentile churches today are placing themselves under the law of the Old Testament and Satan is loving it because they do not know how to rightly divide the word of truth. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 12 to 13 And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace among yourselves. To know them which labor among you, this means you are to invest yourselves in them, personally, spiritually, and financially. If a pastor or husband is submitted properly to God, he will not have to intimidate those placed under him. He is not to have dominion over you, but to be a helper of your joy. Those that are over you in the Lord are your equals, just as a wife and a husband are equal, but each have different roles, just like an employer and an employee are both equal, but one is over the other at their place of employment. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 14 Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. To be unruly means a believer that simply won't place themselves under the authority of God's word or those who are placed over them to help guide their life. These are the very same people who constantly use a church vote to get their carnal way in the church. Remember what happened when the 12 spies went into the promised land to spy it out. The 10 carnal ones outvoted the two spiritual ones. The masses will almost always choose to vote for something more acceptable to the world than what God had intended. Believers are to be patient towards all newer believers and allow them some grace to grow. They do not become a mature saint overnight. They need time and proper discipleship. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 15 See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Because someone wronged you does not give you the right to wrong them. To seek justice is another thing altogether. Believers are to first practice this in the church with their brothers who may offend them. If someone gossips about you, you are not to do the same to them. Not in the church and not anywhere. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 16 to 18 Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. How do you rejoice evermore? Simply by doing those things that brought you joy before while serving the Lord, which could be as simple as reading your Bible again after not having read it in a while. It is your responsibility to reestablish your joy that you once had in serving Christ by getting back to those things that brought you joy in the Lord. It is not just a song to be sung, it is a command to be obeyed, and if so, it will restore your joy. Pray without ceasing, this means to not give up on prayer. The prayer will get answered one way or another and by your consistent prayer life you are disciplining yourself to be able to handle whatever answer God chooses to give you. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 19 to 21 Quench not the Spirit. Despise not prophesyings. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Quench not the spirit, don't give the devil a foothold in your life through sin. We quench the spirit when we give place to the flesh. You cannot quench electricity or gravity which are forces by sinning. They are impersonal forces incapable of caring what you do. The Holy Spirit of God is not a force, but rather a member of the Godhead, and God's Spirit can be quenched when we resist His leading to abstain from sin. Despise not prophesyings, much can be said about the gift of prophecy that was prevalent when Paul wrote Thessalonians, but that gift ceased according to Paul by the end of his Acts ministry when Israel was blinded in part. It was Israel that required a sign, but when they were, in blindness no sign could help them anymore. If someone did come along with a prophecy, they were first to be proven. The prophecies were not to be accepted by total strangers that pop in one week and are gone the next. If a prophecy is sure, they were to hold on to it. Those prophecies that prophesied that there would be great dearth throughout the whole earth in the book of Acts were real prophets, and it happened just as it was prophesied. 
1 Thessalonians 5 verses 22 to 23 abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Spirit and soul and body, most people will say body, soul and spirit which is the opposite way that God's word says it. We are a soul, and we have a body. We focus so much on the body today, and so little on the spirit that we are physical Samsons and spiritual lots. Turn that around by getting on our knees more often, and in your Bibles more often. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 24 Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. There has never been a question as to God's faithfulness. He has called us into the light, and he will preserve our whole spirit, soul, and body blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 25 to 26 Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with an holy kiss. We can no longer pray for the Apostle Paul and his co-laborers in the gospel of the grace of God, but we can pray for the messengers today that are proclaiming it. An holy kiss, kissing another believer today that is not accustomed to such an action would make many very uncomfortable, but such was not the case in many Middle Eastern countries in Paul's day. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 27 I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. God expects all believers to read every epistle he has written us so that we may not walk in darkness. There are too many children of the light today walking around in darkness because they have failed to read the whole message God has given us. They will not have to go through the time of God's wrath because of it, but they could operate more effectively in this age if they walked in more light, which can only be found in God's word. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 28 The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. There are no quotations whatsoever from the Old Testament in either of Paul's epistles to the Thessalonians. The Thessalonian Jews did not search the scriptures daily to see if the things Paul was proclaiming were true. They simply rejected them based on their allegiance to their Jewish traditions where the teachings of men took precedence over the word of God. While these two epistles have no Old Testament quotes in them that does not mean Paul did not quote the Old Testament to them. We know that he reasoned with them from those scriptures for three weeks in the beginning. Acts 17 verse 2 And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Another very unique thing that we won't find in this epistle is the absence of any words of reproof or correction for any problems they may be having. The End